We will never forget Jamal. Um, we will continue to be there for you and for his children uh, forever. A touching tribute tonight for a fallen first responder. Minneapolis City leaders passed a resolution honoring the life of police officer Jamal Mitchell. The mother of his children stood right by their side. And for the first time tonight, we are hearing from one of the first responders on the scene after Officer Mitchell was shot and killed. Mitchell went to the Whittier neighborhood to check out a possible shooting back in May. What happened next still weighs heavily on those called to help. Among them, a paramedic waiting for word the scene was safe and an ER doctor. Both share the trauma of that call with Jennifer Merrily only on WCCO. We saw one of the officers come in to go check out what was happening and that's when we heard that there was an officer down. What is that like? It's terrible. It's um it's one of your coworkers, it's one of your friends. Um you don't necessarily know who it is, um, and you hope that you it's wrong. Um it's 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 the worst. Officer Jamal Mitchell was down, shot at close range by a man he tried to help. Paramedic Angela Erickson says they knew it was bad when a police car rushed the officer to the hospital. If they're not stopping to get aid from us, you know something terrible has happened. Um, and there was still an active scene going on. She says multiple ambulances were called in to help at the chaotic scene. Two shot in an apartment, another shot in a car, and a victim on a scooter. Plus, the shooter was down. And just a multitude of different law enforcement officers on scene. It turns into a mass casualty and an active shooter situation until everything's figured out. Inside Hennepin Healthcare, Dr. Nick Simpson and the team got ready to receive patients. They knew the first was an officer. I think my mind immediately went back to some of the other tragedies that we've seen recently and the you know responders that have died in the line of duty. Simpson says they paged upwards of 800 medical professionals ready to give the most aggressive help they could give. We have basically all hands on deck and uh, I think as valiant as we could be in trying to resuscitate that's that's what was going on. Simpson says it took a while to process the gravity of the loss. It's been an intentional sort of work through conversations with colleagues, conversations with other responders. For me personally, I think talking with a professional therapist has been helpful. He and Erickson were both part of the show of support outside the hospital for officers Mitchell's family and colleagues. That was when everybody just kind of let it go. Um, there's a lot of tears at that point. You don't clock into work thinking that's going to be your last shift. Erickson is still working through the trauma of that day and the deadly ambush of three first responders in Burnsville. We were just starting to really process that and then another thing happens and another thing happens and so it is becoming harder and harder to work through those. She's taken time off to be around family. What was it like when you went home and hugged your kids? Oh it was terrible. It was, it was a good and terrible feeling, right? Like, I got to go home. And hopes others do what they need to to take care of themselves. You have to talk about it. It doesn't go away. Um, you have to get professional help. You have to talk to people um, and really start working through that. You got to look out for your coworkers. In Minneapolis, Jennifer Merrily, WCCO News. Hennepin EMS tells us it held a debriefing after the incident to help people cope and heal. The peer support team and psychologists were at the hospital that night for support, and we are told they continue to be available.